Today we have a short and sweet topic, and it's on the on the lines of, have you ever had someone that you could totally trust to help you? And a lot of times we think someone can help us in a certain area or another area, but who do you know that can help you in every area? This is not about people. This is about the Holy Spirit. We're taking our scriptures from, on the board, Romans 8, 26, from the Mirror Bible, John 14, 12, and John 14, 17. So again, it's going to be quick, so pay attention. Could anyone use a master guide? Could anyone use the wisest teacher in whatever field you're looking? Could anyone use the strongest advocate? Not someone who supports you, but the strongest. Could anyone use... An all-encompassing comforter. That's someone who's with you through thick and thin, no matter what is going on. Could anyone use the most solid strengthener? Someone that really adds strength to you and they never depart and go do their own thing. They're always with you. Could anyone have a reliable standby? Of course, all of us could. But do they exist? Yes, the Holy Spirit does. But the thing is, let me tell you how to get to that. Jesus, how else do you think Jesus could explain John 14, 12, where he says, I'm going to my father and you're going to do the greater works are going to come to you through the Holy Spirit. I'll be sending my advocate, my comforter. How do you think we're supposed to be doing greater works? It's certainly not in our own will. It's certainly not in willpower. It's certainly not in self-discipline. It's actually disciplining self to get out of the way and let the Holy Spirit live through. It's such a magnificent plan. And a lot of times, People start getting in that plan where they accept Jesus, but then they start seeing success or they think they got to keep making things happen. That's where you just got to stop. I should do a stop sign. You got to stop and say, whoop, let the Holy Spirit lead. Let me keep going. The Holy Spirit is the inner voice of truth. So if you want the inner voice of truth, that means about everything that's in John 14, 17. If you want the inner voice, he is the answer to every question in our lives. So if this is the case, if we've accepted Jesus in our heart and we are filled with the Holy Spirit when that happens, why are we not hearing from the Holy Spirit? Well, the main reason is because communication lines. Has anyone ever tried to set up cable in their home or go to a new home? You got to set up cable. I don't know if many people set up phone lines anymore, but let's just say you did. You have to set up a communication line, right? Well, it's the same thing with the Holy Spirit. He's in us. But if we don't set up those lines and get them going, then we're not going to tap in to his realm. You know, in Isaiah 5, 8, 55, 8 says, God is saying, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. That doesn't mean that we don't have access because Corinthians 2, 16 says we have the mind of Christ when we accept Jesus. What it's saying is that God's ways are higher than the natural realm. God's ways are higher than the curse. Satan's the God of this world because Adam gave that to him. That's 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. But the thing is, Jesus redeemed us that, from that curse. So we got to take authority over it. How do we do it? I'm going to teach you. So not everyone can just have a connection, just like with the cable company. It's available to all with Jesus, like we said. All right. You have to make an appointment. The only way to set up this communication lines, to have the master guide at your service, the teacher, the advocate, the comforter, the strength to stand by. He's a gentleman. He is not going to push his way in and say, hey, do it this way. No, and quite frankly, he'll probably be opposite and more soft. And if you don't know, if you're not have the communication lines ready, you won't hear. And it, it, it's not God's fault. He's already done everything. So what you do is you set an appointment every day. That is exactly right. You set an appointment every day in the word of God. The only way to know God is through his word. John 1, 1. The word is God. God is the word. The word is God. God is love. God is one. I just add all those things because back in 1 John, God is love. So love, God, and word are all the same. But you can't just say, God, God, God. You've got to get in his word and let it transform you. Furthermore, you have to start learning the communication lines of the Lord. It's not something you do with your mind. You can use your mind to read and speak aloud, use your mouth to speak aloud, but it's with your heart. But this is the most important part of this message. Everyone who does get in the word consistently has to have an open heart and an open mindset in order to connect with this specific communication line. We know a lot of people, and I was can be included in this number, who read the word my whole life, and my life was pretty blessed. But at the same time, um, there were some issues and some un, unresolved answers, and, you know, it, that's just not how God set it up. So 
what I mean about an open mindset is that you cannot read, you can't set up this daily appointment every day and get with God when you're thinking about the next job opportunity or you're thinking about, I need to put food on the table for my family or how am I going to lose this weight or where are my kids going to go to school? You've got to get your mind on reading the word as if it's a new friend. And when you sit and meet with a new friend for coffee, are you sitting there and say, um, how can I get money from you? Uh, how can I get healing from you? Um, how can I get you to drive my kids around? That is so rude. You would never do that. When you get to know a new friend, if it's a, if it's a good given and take exchange, you're giving and taking and learning from one another. Same thing. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's the person and the Godhead, the same God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. They're all one. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He's given us a seat there to exercise authority. But if we want to know everything, it's not with our mind. It's not about reading more books. The best thing to do is read the word of God and not read it about getting healed. Not read it to get your answer. Not read it. It's okay if you set aside another amount of time to study a certain area, healing, prosperity, whatever area you want. But that's secondary to setting up the communication line. Setting up the communication line and keeping that going is about you getting to know God. When one spends time reading the word and yet reads it with their new job search on their mind, they are thinking about their self. And with self mindset, you can replace job with anything. Husband, wife, spouse. When you read the word with your issues on your mind, it's selfish. You're thinking about self. That's not what you should do when you meet with a new friend. You shouldn't be thinking about yourself and how much you're great. You should be finding out about them and how to be a blessing. So with that mindset, you won't get the revelation of the Lord. But when you lay down self and read the word and say, Lord, enlighten me. I'm yours to command. I, you could be starting this journey. I don't know what to do. This lady says to read the word. So I'm going to start reading. Start in the New Testament and read aloud. Yes, that is so true. If you seek God honestly with a humble heart, you do not have to be a scholar. You don't have to read the words perfectly. You don't even have to pronounce them. He knows your heart. But don't think you can fool God by saying, I'm going to be in the Word 30, 40 minutes a day. I'm in the Word. I'm in the Word. Check, 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 check. The good indicator, if you're really in the Word and you're, you're connected, you're setting up those connection lines, is when you see and hear, when you hear revelation every time at your appointment. And you will get so caught on in that appointment with that God, with his, what he's teaching you, that the time flies and you want more time. That is true connection. That's how you know if you have a connection. If you're not getting revelation every time you have an appointment, that's an indicator that self is on your mind or an issue is on your mind. But nothing as important as God Almighty. He's the Almighty. He, he has the answer to everything. A lot of times we think, well, if he doesn't get handle this fast and immediately, it's not going to get done. And I'm going to like sink. My ship is going to sink. Our house is going to be foreclosed. They're going to take the car. So what? That is Satan pressuring you. Jesus Christ was never in a rush. It took four days for him to go back and get uh, raise Lazarus from the dead. You either trust God or you don't. You might have to develop that faith, but it's not much of a developing. It's a decision. I choose to trust God and keep my, my trap shut, and I'm going to do the word like he said. Last point. You have to control your mind and freeze the thoughts that try to interrupt and keep your mind open to that keep you from hearing from God and what he wants to say. And he will speak to you very clearly, and you will know his voice precisely. You know, those promptings sometimes when you're driving to work or driving home, the promptings about, okay, yes, um, the, the good way to get um, to know that God is with you is if he said, turn here. And you're like, I always go that other way. Why do you want me to turn? And you follow him and you realize that you he had you avoid an accident. That's from spending time with God. What to do when you feel like your mind is um, gets off. First thing is stop being so cool and so wise and thinking you're so smart that uh, my mind's not going to wander. The most... <laughs> that's the person who said their mind is wandering. You've got to be honest and real with yourself and say, you know what? Or don't make the excuse, I have ADD, I can't concentrate. Don't. Because that is a lot. Satan, God can help you with everything. Just stand up and every verse or every few words, make sure you're on the word. You have to check with yourself. You have to, like if you had a toddler, you wouldn't, and you had it, they were in a playground, you would be checking every second to make sure they're not into something they shouldn't be in. It's not any different than what we do when we're focused on something. If you're in charge of an engineering plant 
and you got to check the paper of burning and whatever your job is, you're checking all the time. It's the same process. The reason why people don't do it in the past is because they didn't understand the significance and they didn't make, they didn't understand that God is our father. He's our almighty father. And if you didn't have a father, then tell Satan to get behind you. He's under your feet because God will show you what a father figure is better than any human father. But you have to spend time with him. You can't just get in the word and go like a robot. It's not like that. It's not like a affirmation list every second, every second. Because I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. Listen, the way that God, God's plan works is less of us. Not performance. The only thing we're responsible for is disciplining ourselves to get it done. Do the work and read and listen and love. Think about having coffee with a friend. You would sit down and love them. So you just focus on God and loving him and what you what you want with him. Last um, scripture, Romans 8, 26. And this is from the Mirror Bible. The Holy Spirit supersedes our natural efforts. And he hits the bullseye every time. Can you? That is the best from the Mirror Bible. The Holy Spirit supersedes our natural efforts and hits the bullseye every time. In the notes, it says he's never distracted. He only sees and celebrates perfection. So get in the word. Let it make sense to you. And we will see you tomorrow, which is Friday. Have a great day.